What? Prosecutor von Karma? You mean... No, no, I heard it says successor this time. Successor? Manfred von Karma, he was a really sinister man. He pulled all sorts of nasty tricks, all so he could win. He was a man obsessed with the word perfection. He had a perfect record for 40 long years. Who knows what sort of dirty tricks he used to get each of those guilty verdicts. I will say what I did in the 1-4 case. He did nothing overly special. He wasn't that great as everybody says. And now his successor. I wonder what sort of person they will turn out to be. It's no good. Mystic Maya! Pearly! You showed up! Thanks for coming all this way. I was really worried about you. Hey, where's your mother? Didn't you two come together? Mother is watching over the trainees. She said they have training for two days straight with no breaks. Huh? Then... then you came all by yourself? Yes. I snuck out the manor and followed a map. Don't tell me you walked all the way here. Of course not. I ran. That's... I... oh, oh man. If it takes two hours by train... Pearly, what about the train? What's a... train? I give up. It's time, isn't it? Mm, I'm really scared. What if Von Karma tries to do something to me? At least I know Mr. Edgeworth would be nicer to me than Von Karma. Mr. Ed... Jeepers? Was that? Um, he's Nick's rival. Well, he's also a friend. I still remember him as if I had seen him only yesterday. Every trial was a scorching, fierce battle until the very end. It was always back and forth with them, but when you're rivals for life. Maya! Please don't mention that name ever again. Huh? But why, Nick? I'm... I'm sorry, Maya. I forgot you don't know. He... he's... He's gone, and he's not coming back. You two broke up again? Jeez! W w wait a sec, what's, what's that supposed to mean? Court will commence shortly. Please proceed into the courtroom. Let's go. Now's not the time to talk about that anyway. Nick? Court is now in session for the trial of Maya Faye. Are the prosecution and the defense prepared? What is with this girl? Ahem, <laughs> Mr. Wright. Are you finally prepared? Huh? Uh, yes, Your Honor. Why does he always seem mad at me? Mr. Phoenix Wright. You must be a little shocked because I'm a woman, correct? Quite frankly, yes. Von Karma didn't just have sex with a woman often enough to produce two children, but two women. Wow. Hold on. So this kid is the famed prosecutor from Karma? So that's why they didn't give any gender-specific pronouns. I am Francisca von Karma, the prodigy. I... see. I gave up a promising career in Germany and came to this country for one sole reason. Revenge. She has a whip. Guys, she has a whip. Revenge? Is this about her father, Manfred von Karma? Um, if it's something of a personal nature, I'm sure you can- Oh! I'm talking. If you interrupt again, my whip will do the speaking for me. 
Please speak with your mouth like a normal person. I beg of you. Ow! Make no mistake, I will defeat you. Prepare to go down, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Prosecutor Von Kalma, your opening statement, please. Those of Von Kalma Blunt have only one fate. And that is perfection. The defendant, Maya Fey, will find no escape from her guilt on my watch. Very well. What is the defense's position? Your Honor. Does the defense wish to enter a plea of not guilty? No, I think I will plead for guilty immediately. It'll be such a twist later on. Yes. Foolish fool who foolishly dreams of foolish dreams. Ten minutes. I get the defense ten minutes before it changes its plea. Fair enough. Better than Fankalma saying the entire trial will take place in three minutes. That's right. I'll have you running for the justified self-defense plea in no time. Wait a second. Are you telling me the Ace Attorney Court of Law actually has justified self-defense? Which is impossible. It was always either guilty or not guilty. There was no layer of justified self-defense or simply being bodily harm with fatal causes, homicide, or murder. Look up the definition of murder and homicide. There is a difference, believe me. If we do have justified self-defense, how come D. Vasquez never went for that in case 1-3? After all, Jackhammer was trying to kill her, so her pushing him onto that little spiky fence? That was justified self-defense. Her life was in danger, she reacted, he died. This makes no sense! Justified self-defense. A plea usually reserved for when a person unintentionally kills in defense of himself. We could very easily make a solid case that it was self-defense, but... What? You don't... you don't know what happened in that room yet? For all you know, Maya could have just shot him or stabbed him. We don't know if anything there justified self-defense. So no, you don't have... you couldn't make a solid case of it yet. The defense stands by the plea of not guilty, Your Honor. Because to plead justified self-defense is to say that you did kill someone. Not on purpose. You know, there's a big difference in that. How foolish. If that's how you want to play it, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Then I shall now call the first witness. She's just as scary as a father. Like father, like daughter, I suppose. Yeah, in one of the later cases something happens which always made me laugh when I heard that it happened. Witness, your name and occupation? Yes, sir. My name is Dick Gumshoe. I'm a detective at the local present. Oh! Get to the point already. Explain to the court the details of this murder. Yes, sir. If everyone would please look at this map. The channeling chamber has no windows and the door was locked shut. At the time of the murder, only the victim and the defendant were in the room. What were they doing in there? Um, they... well, they were channeling a spirit, sir. Channeling a spirit? The look of disbelief on the judge's face is... <clears throat> anyway, a few minutes after the channeling started, gunshots were heard coming from inside the room, sir. A few of the witnesses broke the door down and rushed into the room. Ah, uh, and that's when they found that the victim was already dead, correct? Hmm, I believe this is one of the most open and shut cases I've ever presided over. Of course, I have no memory of all the other cases I've had, so... Take that with a grain of salt. So, how was the victim killed? I was about to get to that. Stop wasting my time, then. The direct cause of death was a pistol shot to the forehead, sir. 
the shot was fired from point-blank range. But before the victim was shot, sir, he was stabbed in the chest. The wound was very severe, but not enough to cause instantaneous death. The murderer used the pistol to finish the victim off after the stabbing. Hmm. So the victim was stabbed before being shot. That was just established, yes. This is the victim's autopsy report, sir. Thank you! The court accepts it into evidence. Mr. Wright, you may question the witness. After I have looked at the new... Well... Okay. Doesn't even tell me a time, but... Sure. I do like Francisca. The murder weapon, Detective Gumshoe. Whose pistol was it? It was the victim's. The victim? Now why would he have... Why would he have a pistol? Who cares? The point that you are missing is whose fingerprints are on that pistol. If you're not already paying attention to that, then I suggest you start. Fingerprints? There were fingerprints? Along with the victims, the defendant Maya Faze were also on the grip, sir. Just on the grip? Not on the trigger? By the way, considering what we later find out, I do have some questions about that. So the defendant's fingerprints were left on the murder weapon. Come on, video. There we go. I walked right into her hands there. Point blank, huh? So, about how far away was it? It was anywhere between 12 to 20 inches away. Um, inches into centimeters, so about... 6 to 10 centimeters? And how do you know who was shot at point blank? Mr. Phoenix Wright, I grow tired of the foolish foolery of the foolish fools of this foolish country. I excuse me? Gunpowder burn. Gunpowder burn? When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Well, gunpowder burn, also gunshot residue. GSR. Gunpowder exploding is what makes a bullet fire, and that comes real hot, pal. And there were definitely some gunpowder burns left on the victim's forehead. Wow, never knew that. Love and learn, I guess. Stabbed. And what was he stabbed with? A fruit knife. I see. And whose knife was it? It looks like it belongs to the face, so... And of course, my face print fingerprints are all over it. Mm, all over it, huh? Oh, this doesn't look good. <laughs> what will you do now, Mr. Phoenix Wright? How severe was the wound? If it had been half an inch more to the right, it would have hit the victim's heart. So whoever stabbed him sucks at stabbing people. After a stab like that, it's impossible to fight back, let alone stand. This testimony makes Maya look like she had stabbed him with the intent to kill. Which is, I guess, enough to call this murder. Are you sure he was stabbed first, then shot? Yep, sure as sure can be. One look at the wounds and you'd come to the same conclusion too, pal. A fool is a fool who would only listen to the foolish opinions of other foolish fools. A pistol shot to the forehead at point blank is certainly enough to kill instantly. Does it matter then which was first? I think it does, because if you get shot in the forehead first and you die instantly, and then get stabbed. I don't think... 
you would bleed that much immediately? You might. I need to look that up. Oh, what a pain. That's enough. We have clearly established how the victim was murdered. I brought the two murder weapons with me today. Very well. The court accepts them into evidence. The date and time of death was June 19th at 3.15 p.m. Why is that not mentioned in the autopsy report? I demand to know that. Eyewitnesses claim to have heard two gunshots at this time. And two murder weapons, both with defendant's fingerprints on them? Mm, this does seem like an open and shut case. Naturally. This is going from bad to worse. As if the summary just now wasn't oversimplifying things to the extreme. Your Honor, feel free to slam that little gavel of yours. After all, there's no room left for doubt, is there? That is quite true, Mr. Wright. Yes. Even in the face of all this, do you still wish to plead not guilty? It's the opinion of this court that if you do not adjust your plea, you stand to lose. See, just as I promised Mr. Phoenix Wright, you would change your plea in less than ten minutes. What will you do, Mr. Wright? Will you change to justified self-defense? Because now would be the time to do so. This is your final chance. This is a huge decision. I'd better think this through all the way. Considering it doesn't make any difference. Also, Considering they say that Maya stabbed him with the intent to kill, that would not lead to justified self-defense. So whatever, we're gonna go with not guilty, because if we plead justified self-defense, we're just gonna get told to not do so. By Mia. We would basically be confessing to a murder. No, justified self-defense is not murder. It is a different level. After the trial, Maya's life would be destroyed and she'd be labeled a murderer. Why should she care? She lives in... She lives in Kurain, a tiny town. She's the master. She has her own damn thing to do. She, it's not like she's gonna try to find a job anywhere else. I can't let that happen. Your Honor. Have you reached a conclusion, Mr. Wright? The defendant will... The defense will not change its plea. We will accept nothing short of complete acquittal. You. You have sealed your fate, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Detective! Yes, sir. Present the final portion of your testimony. The final strike. Y yes sir. N now see here, proceedings are run by... Oh! Oh, yes, of course. Go ahead, detective, and give your testimony. I think the court would like to hear about the other piece of incriminating evidence. Shouldn't this be brought up before... We ask if we want to change our plea. Sorry, pal, but there's even more incriminating piece of evidence. This is the costume the defendant was wearing at the time of the crime. As you can see, it's covered in blood. The defendant attacked and killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. So this is the costume. There certainly is evidence of a back spray of blood on this. This piece directly links Maya Faye to the crime, sir. No, it doesn't! It's an outfit. Just because she wears something like that doesn't mean that she was wearing that, unless they found skin particles or hair, and it was not somehow stuck on there because she wore it beforehand. Jeez! 
I see. The court accepts this into evidence. All right, Mr. Wright. Maya's fingerprints on both murder weapons and blood splatters on her clothes. Could this situation get any worse? What's wrong? You seem to be at a loss. I think this is the last piece of testimony the prosecution should have to offer. Feel free to sulk off with your tail between your legs, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Please stop calling me by my full name. It's disturbing. There's nothing to be embarrassed about Phoenix Henry Wright. There is a point here where I kept going into the same little trap and I lost some life. But I'm pretty sure I'm not going to get it this time. I hope. Come now, Mr. Wright. There's no need for that kind of attitude in my court. At least not from you. Everybody else can have that attitude. Uh, all right, just please stop glaring at me like that. Maya's costume? Yeah, she was wearing this when we arrested her. Maya, she's wearing her channeling costume today, too. Is she not allowed to wear anything else? Better question, where did she get the other clothes that are identical to the ones apparently taken away by the police? Then again, maybe Morgan got brought her some clothes when she dropped by yesterday. It's a possibility. This blood on the costume. Lab results show that it is the victim's blood. Shut up, peanut gallery. So there is blood from the victim on the defendant's clothes. Definitely not good. Were there any... Were there? It's were. No H. Were there any other clues you could glean from this piece of evidence? Um, well... If you must change the topic, then the good detective here must testify again. But too bad. Not enough time. Time to move on. Uh, yes, Miss Macomb is perfectly correct. Oh, now when the judge is on her side. When is he ever not on the prosecution's side? But if I bite off more than I can chew here... Sure. Why not? Why is Miss Von Kalma suddenly putting up resistance? There must be a reason as to why she suddenly threw out an objection like that. There must be a clue somewhere on this costume. I just have to look harder. Mr. Wright, Miss Von Kalma's logic is perfect. There's no way there's no way for you to poke a hole in it. Oh, looks like your thumbs up about the costume. I hope I'm not falling into the trap. I mean, I do know that there is a problem with the thing. Actually, there is something very wrong with this piece of evidence. What? What are you talking about, pal? Where is the problem you're talking about? I've come this far. There's no turning back now. The problem I have with this piece of evidence is here. Ugh, I might have to use the stylus for this. Because I want to go PERFECTLY onto that hole. Which I can't. I asked the court to please take a look at the sleeve of this costume. The sleeve? There is a tiny hole here. A... Uh, a hole? But that wasn't the report. Hold on. What's this around the hole? It, it smells faintly of gunpowder. Gunpowder? No one ever told me! A hole that smells of gunpowder? Looks like I found the hole I was looking for. Your Honor, the only logical conclusion you can make is that it must be a bullet hole. Order! 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 This is a very grave matter. It's best we correct the court record first before anything else. 
the ever-loving holy court record. Oh! Sorry about that. I guess we messed up, sir. Is she actually smiling? What else is she hiding? Pull yourself together, detective. That tiny hole doesn't change a thing. The strength of the evidence still holds. Continue with your testimony. That just now was a fluke. Nothing more. How can you say something like that? This is a huge oversight. Well, I'll agree there's a mistake on the part of the police. What Prosecutor Frankhalma has said is true. The evidence still stands. If you do not find a more definite problem with the evidence... No way! Detective Gumsh, please continue with your testimony. Y yes Your Honor. Detective Dick Gumshoe. Y yes <laughs> Having you call me by my full name is kind of a weird feeling. You said that my client killed a person who, without a doubt, was not fighting back. Yeah, I did. Then what, may I ask, is the bullet hole you police overlooked supposed to mean? Um, uh, what does it mean? I'll tell you what it means. It means that the victim had fired off a shot. Is this what it means to not fight back? Now this is the part where we might get to the point of, yes, we have a solid case of justified self-defense. He shot at her, she grabbed the gun and shot back. That would be justified self-defense, ignoring the fact that she stabbed him first. If she... if the stab was before the first gunshot. Which it was, by the way, spoilers. It would seem that way. If the victim tried to shoot the defendant, then it would change everything. Oh, right. The wind seems to be shifting. Hmm. What is with that are you finished yet laugh? Are you finished yet, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Miss Von Kalma? It seems that Maya Faye was shot at by the victim. However, that is only grounds enough to support a justified self-defense plea. That is correct. But I'm sure you remember, Your Honor, what the defense clearly said. They rejected so justified self-defense and pleaded not guilty. Oh, crap. Oh no, I have fallen into the trap. Now I will lose the game. Which means the defense has yet to prove anything at all. No! Well, we have sort of proved that the police is incompetent, but then... The police is always incompetent. Well, yes, that's true. Furthermore, just the fact that there is a bullet hole in the costume is not enough to substantiate even the plea of justified self-defense. Huh? How so? Ugh! Don't just stand there. Hurry up and tell the court what transpired that day. With the new information we acquired added in, of course. Uh, you mean by myself? No. You will get it spoon-fed. Like all the other information in this game. You want me to put together the scenario all by myself? Y yes, sir. Right away, sir. During the channeling, the defendant saw a chance to stab the victim in the chest. Of course, the victim used the last of his strength to fight back, sir. While the two were fighting, the victim took out his gun. The victim took a shot, but because they were too close, he missed. The defendant then picked up on the opening, took the victim's gun, and ended it. This scenario you have put together does make sense. Yes, sir. Well, Mr. Raid? Just by listening, it does make sense. But I won't give up that easily. Please refrain from glaring at me like that. Now then, you cross examination, please.
There was quite a difference in height between Dr. Gray and the defendant. Add in body strength, and it seems unlikely the defendant could have stabbed the victim. Now that you mention it, yeah, I guess. You think you can get away with such flimsy reasoning, Mr. Phoenix Wright? Maya Faye was in the middle of channeling, was she not? When channeling with the Kurain channeling technique, the medium physically changes. With the nurse's build, the defendant could have easily been a match for the doctor. Um... Considering the screenshot we saw of her, saw of her and this profile, she does not look all that much of... You know, that much better built. I don't believe it. She even studied above in Kurain channeling technique. Like I said before, I am perfect. Um, about what you were talking about, I don't quite get it. Never mind, let's continue with the testimony. So, he was stabbed, but the stab wouldn't kill him. But if you think about the blood loss, it was pretty bad. How bad would you say was it? Actually, I went to give blood the other day, and afterward I felt a little lightheaded and dizzy. Well, did you lie down for a while and slowly started to move around like the nurse or doctor probably told you? I guess the damage was maybe about ten times the dizziness? Ugh! Sorry. Where in the world did that pistol come from? Who cares? It looks like the victim, Dr. Gray, had specifically bought it for that day. But a handgun? He got it off the black market about two days before the murder. Why did Dr. Gray bring a gun? Was he taking precautions against something? Missing the tiny hole on this costume will be the prosecution's undoing. What do you mean? This little hole has actually created a huge hole in your testimony. Explain yourself, Mr. Wright. You said the two of them were fighting when the victim fired his gun at point blank. If that were true, then where's the gunpowder burn on this costume? Gunpowder burn? This is what you testified earlier. When something is shot from point blank, a burn area is left around the bullet hole. Oh! But there is not a single trace of gunpowder burn on this costume. That is a very good point. And what exactly does this mean? It means that when the shot was fired, they were standing apart from each other. I'm disappointed, Mr. Phoenix, right? You think you can punch a hole in my logic with that? With wishy-washy thinking like that, anyone can explain anything away. Then I implore you to disprove my line of thinking. Let's see. In the middle of their fight, the victim pushed the defendant away. And it was then, when they were separated, that he fired. How was that? It's a potential? As if that was even possible. According to testimony, the wound from the stabbing was very severe. The victim would not have had the strength to push the defendant very far after that. Have you ever heard of adrenaline? I've seen people do tons of stuff that they technically shouldn't be able to do due to physical or mental trauma. Adrenaline makes you do things. You just got stabbed. You're probably reacting tons of adrenaline and you would have the strength to push somebody pretty far away from you. He could, sh he could have shoulder tackled her. By the way, funny, she holds 
her shoulder just like Von Karma did. You know, senior. Well, then... That's right! The defendant must have pushed the victim away! After stabbing, she must have put some space between the doctor and herself. And then, while she was prepared to strike again, the doctor took a shot. There! That should satisfy even you. That does make an awful lot of sense. What do you think, Mr. Wright? I have to be careful. I can't afford to make a mistake here. Concentrate and think. There is a fatal flaw in your argument, Your Honor. Fatal... Flaw? Oh! Very interesting. I would love to see where this flaw is. Show me something that contradicts my explanation. There has to be a snack in her explanation somewhere. She put some distance between them before rushing to make the final blow. And when she was about to strike, the doctor took a shot. There has to be a point so piece of evidence that contradicts this line of thinking. Was it the folding screen? I think it was the folding screen. I'm gonna try the fold folding screen. This is the piece of evidence that destroys your logic. What is that? A folding screen? Yeah, either this is a picture of the folding screen or actually Phoenix really crammed that thing into the cord record and just pulled it out. I would like to point the cord's attention to the hole in this folding screen. <sighs> it looks like you already know what I'm talking about. Who? Where? What? Mr. Wright, your explanation, please. Are these two really that clueless? The bullet went through the defendant's sleeve first, then the folding screen. It passed through at a height of approximately 8 inches off the ground. Which means... When the shot was fired, my... Uh, I mean the defendant... was not getting ready to strike, but was actually squatting low to the ground. Order! Order! Technically, I can say that if she brought some distance between them, she might have... jumped back and stumbled and ended up on the ground. It's possible. This changes everything. Please look at this diagram of the crime scene. The victim, Dr. Gray, was here when he fired the shot. And the bullet hit this folding screen. It hit at this location, about eight inches off the ground. At this time, the defendant was in this area. I think it was something like... Let's say here? She was standing here, near the folding screen. Wait a second! We know the defendant was close to the ground based on the height of the bullet hole, but how can you gauge the distance from that? Isn't it possible that the defendant was standing much closer to the victim? That's impossible. B but why? You of all people should know the answer to that question, Miss Von Karma. If she were shot from somewhere closer, there would be gunpowder burns present. No. Only if she was about a meter away from him. Two meters or more, no gunpowder burn. So technically, she wouldn't have to be that far away from him. However, there is nothing of the sort around the bullet hole of this costume. C curse you, Mr. Phoenix Wright. You... I believe it has now been proven that the defendant was standing away from the victim when she was shot at. But do you think this has changed the defendant's situation? Honestly, Your Honor, this changes everything. The prosecution has claimed that the defendant was aiming to kill by stabbing. If that were true, delivering the final strike with the knife would be ideal. However, where and what was the defendant doing at the time? Squatting all the way by the folding screen? Exactly. If Maya Faye was the real murderer, why would she be by the folding screen instead of preparing to strike? Upon further consideration, it does make very little sense. Yeah, I figured there had to be a reason. 
figuring things out and proving the logic behind everything is your job. Uh. All right. With this, the rest of the trial should be in the. Blessed radius of disaster. You are such a smart man, Mr. Phoenix Wright. Oh, come on, Francesca, stop lying. To think that you've been able to take a completely hopeless case to this point. Now I know why Papa had a tough time with you. Mm -hmm. You amuse me. Uh, of all the things to inherit, why did it have to be that smarmy smile? Detective, how dare you damage my perfect logic? Uh, huh? How's that all my fault? You can start repairing your standard by first removing that three-strand goatee. And rest assured your punishment will come later. P punishment Well then, Your Honor, I think I've had all I can take of this detective's face. I think it's time to call in the next witness. Next witness? That's gotta be Lada. Very well. The court will take a five-minute recess. After we reconvene, we will hear from the next witness.